My name is Terrence Barkin and I'm the Executive Director of the Graphene Council, the largest community in the world for graphene producers, researchers, application developers, and end users. We have hosted the Graphene in Healthcare and Medical Applications conference series, and the video you are about to watch is from that series. Haydale has been around from the beginning of this uh, revolution of this new material. And the company has evolved uh, uh, enormously from those early days. And, and so we're gonna get an update from John Mark about that, as well as uh, specifically on applications related to healthcare and medical. So with that, your presentation slides are up. It's all yours. Thank you very much. Well, it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here today. Uh, following on some absolutely fantastic presentations from uh, today and yesterday. So I shall uh, begin my presentation with a bit about Haydale. Haydale in a nutshell. We're a, a global company uh, with far-reaching uh, teams and technology that specialize in the utilization of graphene and other advanced materials. Um, our global footprint allows us to be close to suppliers, manufacturers and end users. Uh, and this is really helping us enable the utilization of graphene in medical devices and healthcare systems. The graphene challenge. So everyone's been excited about graphene. We've heard some great you know, case studies uh, over the last day and a half and two days, um, but why isn't it in market? Why isn't it in every product already? We've heard in the past of this graphene challenge. So. It, it often doesn't breed the results expected on paper. It's quite challenging to mix in. There's a lot of process steps needed for graphene and there are ways to enable it. And some of these are high shear mixing, surfactants, defoaming agents, wet chemistries and acid treatments. And they do pr uh, you know, provide quite successful results. But at Haydale, we have an enabling technology that is HD plas plasma functionalization. So this is a unique technology um, for us. It's a, a low cost. It uh, enables and realizes the potential of graphene. And this is our method of overcoming the graphene challenge. How it works is it's a plasma functionalization, a vacuum plasma that covalently bonds specific chemical groups to the surface of graphene. That process then allows whatever graphene you want, whatever precursor material you can think of to disperse effectively in the matrix. Some of the more novel things we do is we change the surface chemistries to actually boost conductivity or boost its performance. Uh, I've got a nice case study coming up in my future slides about its effect in biosensors, which is really unique and can only be achieved through plasma functionalization. At Haydale, we've got a number of reactors available. We've got the HD60 lab scale, HD200 early tonnage pilot plant production scale. We've got a HD1400, one being delivered to this site in Ammonford in South Wales this December. And we've also got a HD4000, that's a 4000 litre reactor system. And we are poised to pr produce you know, hundreds of tons per annum of functionalized graphene powder to the market. Okay. Another key aspect of graphene, especially with medical devices, is how can we do this in a green and sustainable manner? Now, traditional methods, any sort of materials and pigments, and especially graphene, are dispersing agents, uh, surfactants, a high shear, high energy mixing uh, process. Sometimes you've got to substitute metals and uh, precious metals into your formulation. That's not really a you know, it, it enables the technology, but it's not that sustainable. Wet chemistry, a lot of people have had to, you know, the Hummers method, oxidization, acid treatments, you know, they've got a lot of effluent streams, a lot of downstream processing issues and multiple steps as well. And specifically for medical devices, these two solutions do put roadblocks into getting your product certified. Plasma functionalization is lean, it's clean, there's no effluent stream, it's low power, low temperature process that really enables the performance of graphene in product. And in a couple of slides, I'll, I'll go into you know, what you can do with this, but this is really key for us you know, as, as a business, 14,001 accredited. It's really key that we're looking to the future. 
You know, we don't want to develop innovative medical devices that have a huge and negative waste stream and that are just going to outweigh the benefits of the device. So that's one we're very, very proud of and, and very important to the, to the world and society at the moment. Just to, again, to sort of summarize our USP, hey Dale, we've got over 250 grades of graphene we use in our application. We make sure it's a cost-effective process from the start when developing our product, scalable, environmentally friendly, as my previous slide, that's in the forefront of everything we do, that HD60 plasma reactor uses less power than a kettle. Our process is non-destructive. We keep crystalline structure of the graphene. We boost the surface chemistry as well. So that's really key for some of the results we get in product. Um, our process has been verified by the National Physical Laboratory. That's a, you know, a, a proud step for us many years ago. That again, validates the covalent bonding, the permanent change to the surface chemistry. We've got global patent protection. That not only protects our IP, but also gives our customers we work with an edge on their product when they utilize functionalization. So this process is not fixed. It's highly tunable. And um, when I show you that the dozens of potential application and medical devices for functionalization, we are able to adjust and hone in the right raw materials, the right surface chemistry to really utilize and see that uh, boost in their healthcare and medical devices. So. Hey Dale, that global company you've seen, we're a small team, but we're really focused through nanomaterials and functionalization to see that change in, in, in many global markets. We work from construction to aerospace and everything in between. There's a lot of lessons learned in that that can translate into to different technologies. What we learn in aerospace might help us with some of the medical devices we're working in, especially when we're talking about you know, mechanical uh, components, for, for example. But what we're here today for is medical devices. So I've got three main sectors I'd like to talk about in, in our products today. Functional inks, 3D printing and additive manufacturing, composites. There's a huge list there you can see on that list of potential applications for functionalized graphene. So pressure sensors is one. That's smart bandages, uh, patient monitoring, just through graphene alone, we're replacing the need for complex metallic uh, sensing devices, biosensors. There have been some fantastic presentations over the last two days, as I mentioned, and biosensors. Functionalized inks has really been able to, uh, to improve that. And I've got some slides. That's going to be my case study for today. But those biosensors are self-monitoring systems, you know, blood glucose for diabetes, uric acid for gout, uh, MicroRNA collection and biomarkers. It's a fantastic project we're doing for kidney disease at the moment internally. Another application for graphene is anti-counterfeiting technology. That's a really key one for me. You know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, dodgy products out there in the world, especially for pharmaceuticals. You want to make sure you're getting the right grade of material, but you don't want to use expensive RFID tags or easy to copy visual um, counterfeiting technologies. Graphene's got some fantastic solutions in there. We've got ECG electrodes, transdermal patch sensors, barrier films, you know, that the list goes on. You know, textiles and heaters, incubators for, for infants. So at Haydale, we've got an off-the-shelf heater range of inks that can be used. Graphene, when compared to metallic elements, is self-regulating. Um, very efficient. So if you want to use battery packs as well, it really enables that technology. Antimicrobial coatings, we've, we've seen several slides uh, today on that. Um, another one that's quite you know, important for us, single-use medical devices. It's, it's many, many of these we can see in there. Graphene, as it replaces or eliminates the, the silvers and the metallics used in them, it can give a, a huge environmental boost to these single-use medical devices. Hydrophobic coatings, face coverings, um, get into some more of the traditional ones, prosthetics and bespoke uh, custom implants. You know, every patient's going to have a different sort of care case going forward. Elastomers, PCR testing. You know, we're doing a really exciting project at the moment with ProMake for uh, their prevent tube as well. And graphene is going to be a key component in enabling that. Um, antimicrobial composites. Mechanically improved 3D printing, electrical 3D prints. Again, we've got some fantastic projects there 
in UV curing uh, resins for reconnecting nerve tish, uh, nerves in, in the human body, uh, a really exciting application, thermoplastics and adaptive devices as well. So there's a huge application there for graphene. There's a lot to chew on, but as companies like Haydell, we've got off the shelf products that can be rapidly prototyped into these or can be used straight away as the customer needs. Biosensor inks. So this one, I, I want to highlight, why are we putting graphene into it? What, what is the need or the want for graphene in a biosensor ink? So traditionally, you know, blood glucose has just been using silvers and carbon blacks, okay? So the idea is with graphene, we can improve the costs of these, the, the single use device, you, you use them and you throw them away, and the environmental impact. Carbon and graphene is extremely inert, um, and there's big benefits if we can take all the silvers and uh, harsh chemicals out of it. Um, not only are we just trying to make it you know, cheaper and, and more environmentally friendly, we want to do more with these sensors. There's a lot of, uh, and we've seen that in this webinar, there's a lot of exciting innovation, you know, new tests, more accurate tests, but all of that's hindered by this graphene challenge. And that's why, you know, we've been working in, in nanomaterials for over 10 years, and it's only just now starting to break uh, into tonnage volumes as people start to realize ways around that graphene challenge. But with our enabling plasma functionalization technology, we find that our biosensor rings, the, the components that are used to make the electrodes, we find that graphene, once you get the right surface chemistry on it, it disperses well into the matrix. You can see on the left there, that image has got uh, unfunctionalized inks. It's only 1% there of graphene, it just hasn't mixed well. But when you functionalize it, you can see a solid black square. It's gonna have really good conductivity performance and it's gonna have really good electrochemical responses, okay? So our biosensor inks. We've got off the shelf range of biosensor inks that we can down select from per the customer's requirements. These inks contain functionalized graphene. The functionalization we put on the surface is, is threefold really. The first one, A in dispersion. You start to see the graphene you know, want to work in the matrix, want to be part of the system. The second is we see improved electrochemical uh, responses. So depending on if you want a good CV curve or a, a, a clear LSV result, we can do that through the surface functionalization by adding things like carboxyl groups to the surface. We can bespoke exactly what chemistry we want on the surface and the level. We're not fixed to anything there. We can also do some really novel things too with the graphene. If we've improved the dispersion and improved the electrochemical response, through functionalization alone, we can boost the conductivity further. So in biosensors, that's really important for us. We've got an off-the-shelf product of less than eight ohms squared at 25 microns. That gives our customers a really good read rate and a really clear response. Now, with functionalization in biosensors, it removes the need for very complex formulas. So not only are we reducing the costs, improving the performance, we're actually increasing the manufacturability of these products. We get fantastic feedback from our customers about how long these biosensors can last. There's no silver, it doesn't tarnish, it's a very stable formula, as well as rapid sort of uh, certification. There's no novel, you know, issues with reach or anything like that because we're using some harsh solvents. It's a very basic and a, and a, and a very, uh, we're very proud of this technology and this product in market. Okay. Some other applications then on a, a bit of a wider front for Haydell printed applications. As I mentioned, we've got a, a range of off the shelf uh, products uh, beyond our biosensors. Um, we work in standard conductive applications, replacing silver or reducing silver in medical devices. Again, very, very important if it's single use. We've got pressure sensors for, for monitoring, um, you know, rehabilitation, for monitoring um, star, smart, you know, the smart bandage is a very good one, as well as patients, uh, you know, positioning and, uh, you know, how they're resting as well. Um, efficient heaters for, again, rehabilitation, uh, incubators and that sort of thing. They're off the shelf products ready to be adapted into components, into devices very, very rapidly. 
Um, we've got specially formulated anti-counterfeiting inks, as I mentioned, a really, really important one for the pharmaceutical ma market, especially if you've got your PCR test at home. You want to make sure that you're working with a reputable brand or you've got your the correct product. It's not a forge you're working with. Now, these technologies and these systems got to be robust. They've got to work in the real world. So again, through our formalization, uh, formulation, we can make our flexible, conductive inks robust and uh, stable in many environments. We're also not just looking at screen printed technologies. We've done a lot of work in flexographic printing. So that's the roll to roll printing you're familiar with if you see newspaper printing presses. And that takes us from the hundreds of thousands of prints of, of units to the, the millions and beyond uh, for these medical devices. We've also got uh, antimicrobial coating as well. That's really key. We've seen quite a few companies speak about that uh, in this webinar. Um, but through functionalization, we can either utilize the uh, mechanical effects of graphene in, in antimicrobial applications, but we can do some pretty novel things with the surface chemistry, whether we make it hydrophobic or hydrophilic, all through functionalization. <clears throat> Additive and uh, composite applications. So moving out on again then from, uh, from our 2D printed technologies, uh, Haydale's got a composites division that specialize in this application. Uh, we've got an off the self range of master, ba uh, master batches, three, uh, pre preg as well as 3D printing and additive uh, manufacturing solutions. So these are you know, really again, all enhanced through graphene. We usually look at about three areas we look to enhance here. So mechanical properties, electrical properties, thermal properties. Uh, we've got a really good and exciting application with UV resins in SLA printing technologies. So being able to get those three uplifts into those resins as well as FDM for P uh, PLA uh, 3D printing too. So all of those devices that people are doing in, in, in that industry, we can support. And there's also a lot more traditional things that graphene can be used on. You know, people are looking at lab on a chip and, you know, new biosensors. But graphene is going to really support things like elastomers. Elastomers is huge in the pharmaceuticals industry. You want anti-static hoses. You want non-marking elastomers. Again, pharmaceuticals. That could be used for surgical implements and surgical tools or uh, single-use surgical devices as well. The, the graphene giving you that nice uh, lubricating effect as well. Uh, got some really good results with functionalization in elastomers, and I think there's a big growth market there in that one. Um, but some of the things, you know, just carbon fiber pre preg is going to be really good for wheelchairs or equipment in hospitals and sort of thing. Some of the lower technical challenges, if you will, that graphene will really be able to help uh, the, the industry with. Okay. So just sort of coming to a close then, you know, Haydale, we offer, you know, end-to-end uh, -end solutions for our customers with graphene. Look, as, as the previous uh, presenter said, you know, we, we often introduce the technology in graphene, but then we spend most of our meeting talking about what's the end goal, what's the uplift that we're looking. Haydale offers a full solution for these requirements. We work with uh, small companies, universities, all the way up to large global companies such as Airbus. And we're flexible to find out how our technology can fit in with yours and enable success for both of us. Um, there's one thing though I'd like to sort of close out on today with, with graphene is that it's really exciting to be working with such a novel technology and a novel material. And I can see already that graphene is really going to improve the accessibility for healthcare, for people around the world, you know, third countries, it's going to reduce the costs of medical devices, as well as for all of us, innovating some really exciting new test methods that's going to benefit humanity as a whole. And I think that, you know, and all of us in this webinar today can see that, and it's just a, a delight to be working in that field. So uh, I think, uh, Terence, that's the end of that. So thank you for, for your time and looking forward to some questions. John Mark, thank you. Appreciate your presentation. Um, now, unless something has changed uh, recently, Haydale does not actually produce graphene. No. Correct? Right. So yeah, Haydale, Haydale's specialty is this functionalization, which 
um, for, for people who are maybe not that familiar with uh, what functionalization of graphene actually entails, um, I, I'd like to hear about that. But before you, you answer that question, I, I want to also highlight and point out a unique number that was in there that, that probably went over some people's heads, is that um, you, the company has experience now with more than 250 different types and forms of graphene. Because you do not make graphene, you end up working with an awful lot of graphene producers that come to you or their customers and they come to you to formulate, to do this functionalization, to basically, you know, I, I, I like the word actually enhance the, the graphene, right? You improve yep. its properties. So with the plasma technology, talk a little bit, because sometimes people think of functionalization as graphene oxide. It has the oxide mm -hmm. groups on it. Mm -hmm. But what is the range of chemical species that you can you can functionalize graphene with, and and you know just a little example of 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 the range of technical capability to actually functionalize different forms and types of graphene material? Yeah, no, no, th thanks for that. That's a that's a great uh, question there. So we we like you said, two hundred and fifty types of graphene. We're not biased to any of them. We're always looking at the end source. One might have fantastic barrier properties, another exceptional electrical, another one might have electrochemical responses. And we can combine and utilize them. We feed back to the manufacturers about any changes they need. So that's sort of the, the what I say, the precursor material. So we can down select that as well from a cost effective point. That's our first stage in the process. The second stage, as you mentioned, is the functionalization. So Again, it's not just oxygen, it's not just graphene oxide. We look at the matrix, what's the polymer system we want to disperse into, and we can choose. You know, over the last four years, our technology and our capabilities has grown exponentially. We can do different types of uh, amine groups. We can do uh, epoxide, uh, uh, carboxylate groups, and we can do silane groups. And we, we do blends of these and we always focus again, what are we are trying to achieve at the end? Traditionally, you know, eight years ago, we we're just looking at dispersing material. But now, as I mentioned, we can boost the electrochemical response of this material as well as uh, other, you know, hydro, I can see a question just popped up there. We can make it hydrophobic, we can make it hydrophilic, we can mix those uh, different properties. I saw another question there, Terence was asking how permanent and what's the shelf life of it. This is a um, this is a covalently bonded surface chemistry. It's a permanent change to the material. You're going to have to do something pretty special to it to undo the work we've done in our process. So. Excellent. And another question that just did come up there was about mm -hmm. doing different uh, plasma uh, functionalization on separated regions in the same sample. Is it done mm -hmm. with a shallow mask or in different cycles? But maybe, you know, talk yeah. about the, the physical processing of, you know, you, you get graphene in different forms. Mm -hmm. It could be a monolayer of graphene, yeah. you know, yeah. in a sheet, or it could be a powder. Yeah, that's true. A, a lot of our work and the, and the bulk of our volumes in powders that we treat as well. Um, our reactors have, have treated not just graphenes, but boron nitrides, uh, carbon nanotubes as well. Um, we, can, we can mask off, we functionalize components too, as well as uh, flat substrates as well. It's an extremely adaptable and flexible process. Our, our process is usually, especially for the powders, optimized to one hour. Um, and like I said, with the HD1400, we can do over 100 tons per annum through a single machine as well for that too. Um, I'll probably give you a bit about the process. The, the reactors are all PLC controlled. They're all automated fully data logged, you know, that's really key for medical devices. We want to see what's gone in, what's come out for QC. We've got 9001 working towards some of the medical standards as well. Um, and the, the reaction process happens within a contained system, a drum we call a reactor barrel. We have different reactor barrels for different materials or substrates depending on the application. And we, that helps us with any sort of issues with uh, contamination. Excellent. Now, Graphene production methods, quality control, scale, and volume have all evolved tremendously over the last 10 years. Um, and you guys have been there working with mm -hmm. all these graphene producers during that period of time. 
Um, do you have a comment on on the nature of the graphene that you're working with or the ability yeah. of other companies to produce it? Because I think that's a question people have is quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we pride ourselves being flexible in that position to choose our raw material supplies. We've got some some you know key supplies for us that we work with. And I, I've been working at Haydell, you know, over coming up to nine years now. And I've seen our, our suppliers uh, grow like we have in the technology and understanding the graphenes, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what are the limits, how can we optimize the manufacturing routes, how can we reduce costs. We've seen all of that, you know, Haydale's gone from producing up to one ton a year to, to tens of tons. And, and this December, we're going to be over 100 tons a year uh, capabilities. And that's the same for the raw material suppliers. Our suppliers have a huge range of manufacturing these materials, where it's natural uh, graphite that's being milled down or generated for some wet chemistry or uh, you know, synthetic graphene as well. So it's fantastic to see the maturity in the industry and also probably the maturity in our customers as well. We're seeing a lot more understanding from the market about what it can do. Maybe not necessarily the, the background IP, if you will, but we've gotten a a good pull from customers now saying, that's exciting. I need X, Y, and Z. Can you deliver it for us? And that's where Haydale really comes into its own about being able to select the right surface functionalization, the right material, as well as the right manufacturing process for the customers. We don't just send them over a, a pot of graphene ink and say, try and make a sensor. We liaise with our customers. We have that two-way uh, communication with them to make sure there's a smooth uh, new product implementation. Well, that's that's knowledge and experience you guys have accumulated over a decade. So that's mm. that that's now can be leveraged for the benefit of customers coming to you looking for these solutions. You you're one of the few companies I would say that has that kind of really broad perspective over types of materials and applications. There's a question from one of the participants. Uh, let me just read that out. So it's how about binder or binder free inks in terms of stability towards sustainability and functionality in smart textiles for wearable sensors technology. And that's followed by the same, uh, same individual. What product do you prefer using in nanotechnology coating on textiles without compromising the permeability, I mm. guess, and breathability and comfort properties of wearables and smart gadgets? So uh, conductive inks and, and wearable on textiles. Yeah, well, there's quite, there's quite a vast range that we work in in that industry. I mean, we've spoken about some of the, the heated garments we work with as well. And they're, you know, they're probably thicker, non-breathable layers for the masks too. And, and that comes from our unique standing about what graphenes we can choose. So if we're looking for, for thicker heaters, pressure sensors, you know, sensors in garments, we would choose one range of, of graphene and one range of resins and solvents to be used in that application where if we need to develop our graphene face masks, we, we've got a, 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 a ASTM F3502 certified face mask. We can choose a different grade of material that doesn't change the viscosity of the inks we use, allows for a low viscosity product that provides a nice, smooth, uniform covering over the textiles, maintaining that breathability as well, maintaining that washability of these things. We want to make reusable face coverings, and, um, and and reusable devices, especially in, in the this high use climate we find ourselves in. I think we have time for just one last question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you look at all the presenters yesterday and today, everybody's got a slightly different business model from you know production mm -hmm. of the material, the foundry service, uh, going up the value chain with devices, and even uh, Haydale, where you provide, you know, a bespoke service or like a like a compounding mm -hmm. service of doing the functionalization for clients, um, but you also do your own products like the functional links, et, et cetera. Um, do you view some of these other companies, other graphene companies, are they competitors of yours? Are they suppliers of yours? How how do you view that landscape? We're we're, we're completely agnostic to it. Our our core USP is the functionalization. Everything else, you know, that, that's the background technology that we're really proud in. We can license out the reactors. We can toll manufacture for our customers. We work with suppliers. We functionalize their material and send it back to them. Um, but that's our core technology. The foreground IP 
We can, the customer can own that. We can work with them on it as well. Like I said, we work from very small companies to very large companies. So we have to be flexible. Our core USB is the functionalization and the flexibility of our technology. Excellent. Well, Jean-Marc, I appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing the information about Haydale and what you guys are doing. You have a unique position in this ecosystem with the functionalization services that you provide. On behalf of the Graphene Council, I want to thank everybody for participating and for your interest in this sector. Clearly, Graphene has a very important future in healthcare applications, whether it be for devices, medical sensing, diagnostics, or as our last speaker, Jean-Marc, showed, even in some of the infrastructure of gowns and, and devices and uh, elastomer products, et cetera, that can be enhanced with graphene. So with that, I want to thank you very much. Thank you for your interest in the Graphene Council. If you have any questions, if you need any guidance, if you need information, anything to do with graphene or any of the companies that you saw in the past two days, please reach out to us and thank you for your time and attention.